I'm continuing to work on this thing. This is the 6633A DC power supply. It's a 50 volt 2 amp unit. Now I did a previous video on this, repairing it and fixing some stuff. It's not 100% done yet, but it is now in a functional state. I did load tests on it and it is all working fine. So it actually works. Now the issues it has though is the noisy fan. The fan is rather noisy. Lack of binding posts on the front to do connections because it's all rear output stuff. It's not much to it and it's also a little bit dirty. So I think I might pull the front panel off this thing, give it a bit of a clean up. I'm not going to show you that because it's going to be a bit boring, but I'll do that myself before I record more video. Clean the front panel up, get it looking a bit nicer. And then whilst the front panel's off, prepare all this stuff for the binding post, which I have sitting just here. These are the ones I intend to put on. So they're very much like the Agilent ones. We'll use these ones because they, they should match quite nicely. Now it also has sensing, I believe, which is from a socket over here, right at the back of the board. There's a little header array over here. I think that's where the sense terminals are, is on that pin. It's got two terminals right here for the outputs, directly on the front panel, like a couple of spay terminal kind of things. But I think the sensing's over here, so I have to run a wire down. But I'm not too worried about that part of it. That looks fairly straightforward. But first thing, I'll get the front panel off, give it a clean up, then we'll look at doing the next of it. So to get the front panel off, you've got two screws on each side, and there's also a little nut just in the centre here behind the panel. So it's threaded on from the back, which holds the centre of the panel in. And it seems to move from that. And then we've got some movement, and we've got power cables here, display here, keyboard here. What I'm going to do now is dust around inside here, get cleaners up a bit, and move the display, clean all the face up on that display, and I'll drill these holes out. Easy enough. Alright, so this thing here uses little cheap plastic nut things, which are weird, like they're pressed nuts. You have to be really careful getting them off, because these posts are obviously going to be fragile, being this age. So just sort of up and down, up and down, just to free it up to get any swarf out. Because as it's undoing, it's actually cutting more swarf. If you go up and down with it, it helps to keep it clean and stop it from binding up. Which means then you can pull the display out, hopefully. There we go, there's a the display. And all I really want to do is just give it a clean. That's all I want to do. This, and I'll get some alcohol, get that wiped down, get that all nice again. So I've drilled out both the holes. And this is 7.5mm hole in this particular case for this particular binding post. And I've also got like a little lump on the side to little lobes, which are supposed to lock into each other, but in this case, because the plastic's so thick, it won't do that. This little lobe on the side there, maybe, on each side. So I've tried to cut those in as well with the drill bit, smaller drill bit. And also, I've got the bottom one already installed. So I have to do the same thing with the top one. And then I can probably refit it and then look at wiring it up somehow. Just a little note, if you ever use this particular type of binding post, is that you have to make sure when you do these up, these aren't tightened down. Because as you tighten them, it actually pulls the plastic back a little bit, well, it pulls the metal insert in slightly. And if you have that tightened up down here, it'll actually lock up on here, not on the body of it. So make sure you've got them around a couple of bits, and then you can lock it down with a nut drive or something. Fairly securely, you don't need to move. No, click, about there. That's it. Binding post attached. So I've refitted the front panel. I've got some cables prepared. It's actually silicon wire. Bit of overkill, but that's what I had laying around. It's the first thing to fit into my hand. You have to actually put the front panel back on again before you can attach these. You can't get them through the hole in the front panel there. So that's ready to go. Now, the next thing I'm going to do before I attach these, I need to find the connections for the sense terminals, which are around the other side over here. I believe it's like pin 13 and pin 8 or something like that. But I need to run wires from here down here, run around the front to where those terminals are and I attach them all at the same time so the sense terminals directly pick it back onto these so I need to twist some wires together to run to the sense terminals on the back I happen to have my drill here from drilling these holes this is a nice quick easy way of doing it see how easy that is? of course now we've got the back ones tangled up because I didn't have it in the right place but that's fine we'll just stretch those out and there we go Look at that, nice twisted cable. Dead easy. Done. So a little while ago I purchased a crimp set for doing G-Pong connectors. And that's what I needed for this cable. Here's all the crimps. You just need the right size crimper for this. And I don't actually know what size it is because it's not marked. 0.25 to 4 millimeters square. And it's the second one up I found works the best. So I'm quite sure what size that is. But that's what works on those. So that's those done. Well, we'll do now is crimp some ring tunnels on this end to go onto the actual 
front panel connections and I can then run that through and hook it up. So I've got the cables all now hooked up on this side. So it's the terminals all mounted on, that's all screwed up. Running around here, screwed up, not messed up. Uh, it's not screwed up as in messed up as in it's attached. <laughs> it's running across here. I'm trying to keep it a little bit separate away from this one. This is an AC wire, all right? I'm trying to keep it a little bit away. Although there are cable bindings here, I'm trying to just separate it very slightly. Just to reduce the potential noise induced in that cable. It is tied here as well, but I'm going to leave it dropping down across the PCB here instead and try and get it away from the AC cable again. So I'm trying to keep it away from here as much as I can. Now this just needs attaching to the PCB. These wires are probably a little bit longer than I need them to be, but that's okay, I suppose. So I need pin 8 and pin 13. Well, pin 13 is the positive, sense positive. And that's the very end pin, so that's the easy one to find. That'll just go straight onto there, like that. And pin 8 is obviously a few pins over from that one. So four pins, five pins over, four pins in between them. So I think that's eight there. So eight, two, four, six, eight. Yep, pin 8 is negative. So let's make sure they're pushed right down. That's attached. Now, on the rear panel here, we've got the links and stuff on the rear panel. Now, obviously, because we want to do front panel sensing, not rear panel sensing, we need to take these links off because we don't want this to be sensing on the back because these outputs are in parallel with the front ones. So if you're getting a voltage drop on the front and you're sensing on the back, you're not necessarily going to get the same voltage readings. So I need to take these links out from here. The one is I put in anyway because while I was doing testing, let's put this little link in here. And on the diagram, it actually does show a 1K resistor across the sensing positive and negative terminals. So it does actually have some kind of internal sensing anyway. So I was able to stow it this way, turn it sideways, so that's stowed, it won't be lost at least. Now obviously there's a side effect with this, having it doing sensing on the back, well the rear of those binding posts at the front there, I mean you no longer have external sensing, if you do want to do external sensing, you can't do it anymore because it's sensing on the binding posts. And most times that's going to be absolutely fine. I mean, it's only a 2 amp power supply. It's not doing like 10 amps or something like that where you're going to need a bit more current or 5 amps or whatever. I think 2 amps is probably going to be all right. Voltage drop, probably not so critical. If it was a big deal, you probably could still hook up to these sense terminals on the back here and run those in parallel with those because it would still be kind of sensing. I suppose an option for this would actually be to have, have a switch. So you could do internal external sensing and have a switch for it. You could probably do that, mount a switch on it somewhere and just, just interrupt one of the lines or both the lines, switch them. That's certainly something that could be done and it would be fairly easy to do. And as I've got enough wire on here, that's actually something I could do quite easily because I, I could just cut the wire and switch that wire on and off. That could be done. Well, let's power it up and see what happens, see if it goes bang or not. Well, it's still sensing something, so... It appears good. Uh, voltage set to one volt. Oh, sorry, did seven volts. <laughs> One's over here. One volt. Here we go. And that's really high. That's okay. Let me see what the actual output actually is. Yeah, my 97 millivolts or so. I'm going to the terminal proper. Not 98. How cute is this thing? Probably close enough. You want to be fussy about it, don't you? You do, aren't you? I oh, know. You're just going to be fussy. You're going to insist on a better meter. There you go. The little Brian is actually not a bad meter. Here's a fluke. No one's going to dispute the fluke, are they? What's the saying? No one ever got sacked for owning a fluke. Look at that. Bang on one volt. Just flick your one volt before. Obviously the readback's a bit wrong. Got this thing about the fan. So I just went to go and release this fan because I was going to have a look at the fan here and see about maybe see if I can make it quieter or oil it or something. I only found this this screw here is actually loose already. I guess vibrations done it. I mean, I barely had to touch it and it's just turning. That was already loose. Check this one out. This one's slightly tighter, but not much. And then he has two screws holding it on. And has like a PCB buffer to, to uh, guide the airflows. 12 volt fan. I don't know if this can be serviced or not. That feels rough actually. That's actually got a bit of play in the bearing and it feels rough as it's spinning. I can feel a vibration. So yeah, that could use replacing. I have to see if we can find one. 
So I had a bit of a change of heart about something on this. Now that sense line which I ran down just now with that sense wire going onto the header in the back here. I was thinking about this and I was thinking, well, what if you don't want to use only internal sensing? If you've got a situation where you do have wires which do have a lot of voltage drop, you do want external sensing. So I was thinking, by doing what I've done on the front here, it means you couldn't actually possibly do that, whereas previously you could. What I've done is now is I've added a switch on here, a front and rear sense switch, obviously on the rear. All right, so when it's down for front, it's using the wiring we added on the front here. And when it's on rear, it's still using the sense terminals on the back here. So you've got the option of doing it either way. So you could say internal or external sense if you wanted, I suppose. But I decided to go front and rear. Most of the time front would be fine anyway, but sometimes you might want to use external sensing and then you could switch the rear and hook up to those terminals and use them. This is actually covered as well. Somebody else, MIDI, on the EV blog forum, I'll probably put a link down below for the thread and stuff like that on this unit. Some of these modifications is done exactly the same. Like these things I was thinking I'll, I'll do, and then information about like the sense connections on here that was in that thread is also in the service manual too. If you read the manual, you can find it. But and he actually ended up doing the same thing. He ended up putting a switch on the rear as well. I think he put it over this side instead. But I, I put mine over here. What I had to do was cut that wire because I left plenty of wire slack on there. Actually, cut that wire and just sold it onto the back of the switch. Um, easy, because um, there's actually holes in the chassis here for other options or something. I don't know, but. Just had to drill it out to the size to suit the switch, and it's six mil or something. Anyway, that's working. So that's that. I think the last thing I need to do now, aside from maybe changing the fan, maybe I've ordered a fan. We'll see. I may or may not bother. Is I want to build the circuit which MIDI designed for doing the fan control to ramp the span speed up and down a bit temperature. So I want to build that. Then I think you know I'll try that out, see how that goes. That might be enough. So I have ordered some fans. So if I do find that it's still too noisy with that modification I can sort the fan out and get the best of both. So only minor things two screws to get the thing on off it's not exactly a big deal swap it out. Alright so I build this board now it's already assembled in there I've put it somewhere else like the, on the EV block form people have been putting it down here next to this heatsink right here I'm putting a bracket on it and putting it right by the transistors and then kind of having it resting on there with a bit of thermal compound and I wasn't really happy with the whole resting it on there thing but I noticed that they've got these two unused holes here, one there, one here, which are three mil threaded. So I thought, well, what, why don't I just build a smaller board up here? It just tucks in there quite nicely and crimp it on with a crimp terminal. So now you can see what I'm doing. So it's a bit messy. I've still got to tidy up a little bit more yet, but I haven't tested it yet. I don't know if it works yet. We're going to find out in a second. I've got a thermistor in here crimped in some thermal tubing, right? So a heat shrink on it, completely insulating it on the wires between themselves and also from the crimp itself. And the crimp is obviously going straight to this, which is potentially a voltage. Alright, so it's insulating that this board has been cut off across here so it's not touching the chassis. It's electrical isolated from the chassis and it's basically it's got a little bit of circuit here which is going horizontal in that gap. There's a capacitor under here, a 330 microfarad cap. Put some heat shrink around that as well to insulate it from the casing so it's not just relying on the heat shrink of the actual capacitor. So that's if it does move in closer and you know, touch it or something it'll be, still be okay. You can see it's not secured down yet. There's also a hole just here. So if I you want to drill a hole through the board, drill a hole through it, bolt it there and make it solid. And that's actually perfectly lines up with that heat sink. Right? It's perfect alignment. So that's a perfect place for it. All we've got to do is drill a hole in the board and actually bolt it on. I'm going to be lazy. I'm just going to use a bit of uh, this stuff. Hot glue. Because I can't bother going to the garage and get my drill out. <laughs> I don't actually use any tools apart from the crimper. Well, I didn't use a crimp of that really, I only barely crimped it. I've done a crush the uh, thermistor, so it's only barely crimped, just enough to hold it in place. Yeah, so that's why I've got a wire running across here, just loosely right now, running across the chassis. Soldered onto that diode down here where it's supposed to go. I will tidy it up afterwards once it, I actually confirm it works. Also, like I said, I'm going to hot glue this thing into place so it doesn't move around. Right now it's just hanging off the thermistor wires, which isn't obviously very good. So I'm going to do one last visual check to make sure I've got no shorts on this board after assembling it in place. Then I'll power it up and we'll see what happens. Right, let's power this thing up. Could be magic smart, could go bang, could have got it completely wrong. We'll see what the fan does. Well, it's not starting. Seems it's not doing anything. Hmm, that didn't work. What's wrong with that? In the case you're wondering what the dangerous voltage is on these chassis, reference to the zero up rail. 78 volts. Both these things. So why have to give it what you do with these things? I just remember what it was. This TL431, which I'm using here, that thing. I just remembered these ones I've got have a reversed footprint. So the orientation is backwards from what it should be. This caught me out before when I built another project. 
If I take this out, turn it around, put it back in again, I bet you it'll work then. Well, maybe I won't bet you, but there's a better chance. I'm going to swap it around. Right, let's try this again. I'll swap that uh, TL431 around. Hey, that worked. That's working. Check voltage on the fan, see what's actually running it. There we go. 4.8 volts, perfect. 4.8 volts, great. That's higher than I wanted because the original design had a 4 volt threshold for standard static temperature. Right, but right now for mine, it's sitting at 23.7 degrees, which you can't come to see. 23 degrees, right? So nearly 24 degrees. So it's a nice temperature to be referencing. And the 25 degree rating was supposed to be 4 volts on the original design. Now I changed one of the resistor values. It was supposed to be a 10K resistor. I changed it to a 12K resistor to try and get a slightly higher standing voltage. And I didn't like the one that was there. I think it was a little bit too low. So I, I did that to increase that voltage slightly. I'm not going to touch that to see if it's getting hot because that would be silly. So I put an overlay up here and there'll be some links and stuff down in the description down below for the EV blog forum thread for this unit where the actual design and the circuit is in there. All right? And don't forget, my version is using a 12K resistor, not a 10K resistor, okay? So it's got slightly higher voltage, as I said. So that's, I think, something you should probably do. I mean, slightly higher fan noise, that's idle, but it's still way better than normal. So I'll just go out my RTA here. Let's fire this up with the RTA. And we'll do an SPL measurement and we'll actually see what we get. Now this is obviously staying on its side, but that shouldn't affect it. Now I'm probably gonna put this in line with a certain point, maybe just in the front there or something, I'll try and get a reference point. So I'll do an SPL check now with after the modification, I'll do one before as well. So I'll, I'll remove the wire so it's effectively like it was before modification. I've ramped the fan speed right up to maximum and then we can recheck that one. Okay, so let's do SPL mode. And we'll fire this up. So I think I'll put it so it's in line with the front panel, like the tip of the microphone here is in line with the front panel and say one finger width above, right? That's a good reference point, in line with the fan. No, 55 maybe, 56. I'm gonna take the wire off and we'll do the same test. Okay, so I removed the wire. That's floating up now. So that's about 7 dB louder. There's the RTA. As you can probably hear, it's much louder. Nice, right, so I think we can call that particular project finished. Um, don't forget to check out the other videos down below for other repairs and electronics test gear things I do. Subscribe over here if you're not already subscribed. Patreon support link over there if you want to help me to buy a bit of test gear like this. Get you later.